boys and girls, and welcome back to another video. And I get the feeling the subject around today's video is going to be quite a controversial one. Computational photography. Is it the future? Or is it a fad? Here's long exposure, only it isn't a long exposure. Looks alright that. Oh, you can tell the warmer months are moving around now because I am a little bit damp underneath this lot. Now, that first photograph that I showed to you, it was a long exposure photograph. It was taken over 60 seconds. But it wasn't actually a long exposure photograph because one photograph wasn't taken. It was a series of several photographs taken, stacked one on top of each other in the camera to give a long exposure look. You can kind of think of it as using aperture priority mode, this live ND. If you've never heard of Live ND before, this is how it works. Like I said, you can think of it as aperture priority mode. So you set your ISO, you set your aperture, and to a point you set your shutter speed, you tell the camera that I want to take photographs over 60 seconds, and that is what the camera will do. Only it will use your aperture, it will use your ISO, it will use your exposure compensation if you've used any of that, and it will take photographs exposed at those settings, only it will do it over a period of time that you've set in, at a shutter speed that the camera has determined is the correct shutter speed for that photograph. And that's how it works. It doesn't take one 60 second exposure. It maybe takes 30 tenth of a second exposures off the top of my head. And that's kind of how it works. It's a really fun tool to use. Only it's not the only way of doing it on this OM system, OM1. Let's show you another way. It's called Live Composite. And I can take a long exposure photograph for essentially as long as I want. So here's the camera set up in live composite mode. You access this through the bulb menu. So you turn the mode out to bulb, scroll all the way until you come to live comp. There's a couple of settings you've got to dial into here first before you can take a photograph. The primary one being the shutter speed. You set the shutter speed at four seconds like I've done, and you set your aperture and your ISO, and then you maybe have to throw an ND filter on there just to get the camera down to four seconds. And that's all we really have to do to get this super long, long exposure because the camera now knows how long to take photographs for I will press the shutter button, the camera will take a base exposure, take an entire photograph of the scene, and then we'll press it again, and it's going to lay the highlights on top of that base photograph. And the highlights in this scene being the surf that is going to swirl around, which will give another look to this long exposure. So let me bring you around, and I'll show you exactly how it's going to work. So first of all, on the front of the camera, there is a polarising filter and a 10-stop filter. That's giving me roughly 11 stops of filters. So when I'm down at F9, I'll be able to get this four-second exposure time that I'm going to go for. I'm just going to take a photo of surf washing around these posts with these posts out here in the distance as well so that's it the camera is now set up to take a four second photograph and we're not going to take one again we're going to take a bunch of them so we're in live comp mode so if i press the shutter button once the camera's going to take a four second photograph to get that base photograph and as soon as that camera's done that which it should have done by now ready for composite shooting if i press that one more time that's now going that camera is going to take a series of four second exposures and stack the highlights on top of each other. Similar to how you do star trails or catalyte trails. Well, this is going to go and go and go and go for as long as I want it to do. And that's going to give me a really long exposure using settings equivalent to that of a four second photograph. So let's leave it for five minutes and see how it turns out. So I can see on the back of the camera a histogram and we've just clicked over five minutes. So if I press the shutter button one more time, apply some noise reduction which i found really annoying but there's no way of really turning it off this live cut moment if i put my face up to the viewfinder and we have a five minute long exposure photograph everything is really really smooth and really really flattened out now you're going to notice the conditions today that i'm actually shooting this mode in it's quite overcast it's quite gray and it's quite easy to blend the sea and the horizon into one we're going to get no real iffiness in the sky if this was a sort of a blue sky day with some white fluffy clouds around and I was trying to do this with those white fluffy clouds in the sky. The one place this mode lets itself down is in that situation. You see some really jagged and really obvious stitching where the clouds have been moving. With the random motion of the sea it's not so bad but a very continuous kind of flow in the sky with some clouds. Even with the software advancements in this camera over the first cameras this mode was it still looks a little bit iffy when it comes to white fluffy clouds but Here's that photograph.
So why do I say that this kind of photography may be controversial? Well, I only really have to look at the comments sections of my own videos to see that there are people out there that really dislike this way of doing photography. Whereas to me, anything that improves workflow and speeds up processes is a fantastic thing. Both of the photographs that I have taken today, I could have taken in different ways doing some traditional photography long exposure kind of techniques. But I've got a camera and a toolkit that is capable of doing that for me. So I opt to use the in-camera techniques rather than wasting my own time when I go home, when I can do it in camera when I get there. I value time over the editing process. I'm not a big fan of editing photographs. I find it very boring and a little bit chory. It's kind of something that has to be done these days. But if there's a way that the camera can do it for me, well, I'm going to pick that option. And it comes back to when I've mentioned in previous videos, a camera is essentially, it's just a tool for getting this from this beach for you to see, isn't it? It's not, it doesn't all have to be done in a traditional kind of way. As long as the end result is the end result that you want and that I want, then why not use it? It's kind of a funny thing. Some people prefer traditional methods. Some people prefer modern methods. It's, let's not argue about it. It's just, you know, we get the same end result. It's just done a slightly different way. So I've moved down to one of my favorite spots on this beach. There's a group of posts, but fortunately some of the boards are still attached to them, which makes them kind of unique along this stretch because a lot of the boards have weathered away and eroded away in the tide, but these boards are still attached. Now, we're around an hour out from high tide, but yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed. I can already see that the tide, I don't think it's gonna come in high enough to get the photograph that I wanted, but it should come in high enough to get a photograph, if that makes any sense. I was kind of hoping that the tide was going to be washing around these posts where the camera currently is, so we can get the tide swirling around these three, these four, and we can get all the boards and everything, but I just don't think the tide's going to be there for this one, but we'll try, we'll see what we can do with it. So let me bring you up here and I'll show you the kind of photograph that I have in mind. So the idea of this photograph here is to use three of these four posts leading round, you can get them caving round towards these boards in the background with the surf just smashing against them. Now, like I said in the previous bit, I was kind of hoping the tide would be a little bit higher in and swashing around this, but I just want to get an idea. I just want to take a photo and get an idea to see if this would work. And we can maybe come back and the tide's a little bit higher when we're on them in days. Is it a spring tide where it's really high and everyone might panic around here because we tend to flood. So let's get a photograph taken. There's some blue sky just starting to appear across now. I really don't want that in the photograph. So let's hurry up and get this one taken and let's just see what happens with it. So let's go, let's have a look at this. Let's just move this polarizer around like that's a little bit better. So the idea of this, I have the bottom three posts just sort of zigzagging and dotting around. I'm gonna take this now while there is actually some water up against the top end of this. We have the three posts just dotted and zigzagged around, leading and caving around towards the posts in the background. And obviously we have all of this tide just crashing against it, which pushes the tide right up towards the top end of this. Like I was saying, I was hoping the tide was going to be around these posts just so we can have the tops of them in the water as well, but it's not looking like it either. One of two things is going to happen. This cloud's going to break, which is going to look really ugly in this photograph, or the tide is not going to make it. So I'm going to take this photograph now, I'm going to show you this. I might just hang around just to see what this tide and cloud does, but I can see what the blue sky starts to blow from behind me. I can say, I really don't want that in the photograph. So 60 seconds, F6.3, ISO 200. I'm using a 10-stop filter, a 4-stop filter, and the Polarite. So it's a combination of ND filters and the live ND in this camera. So let's just see how it turns out. So I'm genuinely gutted to be packing up right now. The clouds have all but gone, it's going to be blue sky, which isn't going to really give me the look that I was going for for these photographs, but yeah, it's just so annoying. The photograph that I wanted was there, just this wasn't there, which has kind of led me to wonder, would blue hour, sort of pre-sunrise, be a better time? You know, when the high tide is slightly, maybe an hour, before sunrise. I'm wondering if that would maybe be a better time to come down and get this photograph. I'm gonna come back and get it. I'm just gutted. I'm really disappointed. I thought today the conditions and the tide was going to be there and it's really bugging me. 
So, anyway, a little bit of computational photography. I know it's not for everybody, it's not everybody's cup of tea, it's not everybody's bag, and that's absolutely fine. Just the way that I've decided that I like to do things. I have a camera that's capable of doing it. I'm going to use the camera in its toolkit and everything that it incorporates to my advantage. And Well, I enjoy doing it. If you enjoy doing it, or let me know your preference down in the comments. Do you prefer the computational side, or do you prefer the traditional side? Or maybe a mix of both, like I sometimes do, you know, an ND filter and the built-in ND filters, just combining two techniques, traditional and a little bit more modern. So thank you very much for watching today's video. If you have enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up and a like. It really does help the video and it helps to bring you viewers to see my content. And if you're new here and you see me for the very first time, why not drop me a subscribe down below and you'll see more micro fourth age related nonsense every single week. So until the next one, I'm going to love you and leave you and say peace and goodbye.